Gavin Townsend here today with Pat Warner at this year's Sportex 2012. Thanks for the interview, Pat. Oh, you're more than welcome. Pat, could you elaborate why are you famous in the bodybuilding world? Uh, I was the first heavyweight British bodybuilding champion in 2009. It was a class that was invented for guys that was too heavy for the uh, 90 kilos and not heavy enough for the super heavyweights. Mm -hmm. So they invented a class called the 100 kilo class, which they made it the heavyweights. Um, and I was the first winner in okay. 2009. It's the first time it came out. And why did you get into bodybuilding? Um, I played semi-pro football. I was a winger. I was fairly quick and I was always pulling hamstrings. Uh, I was told by a football coach to build mine up by squatting and doing some form of weight training. I went into a gym, started training, loved the feeling, and then thought, I'd like to do this, but whatever it is, I'd want to be bigger and stronger. I still wanted to play football, but I still wanted to And you still play now? Uh, on charity deals and stuff like okay. that, I try to, you know yeah. what I mean? As long as it's not in season when I'm going to get injured or pull a hamstring, yeah. Because I like to give back to the community where Absolutely. I come from, So I'll, and normally with charity football and stuff. And people are quite surprised when they see a 19 stone guy going down the wing <laughs> and can still move, you know what I mean? It, so. it, it looks like a rugby player. Yeah, 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 it looks like a rugby player. <laughs> but, but playing perfect football. Yeah, but playing good football, so really? I love that, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Pat, can you elaborate a bit more about your diet, about your training? What's your diet like at the moment? Um, well, obviously, I, I just competed in the Masters, so I've done a 23-week diet. Because I was in uh, Madrid last weekend doing the uh, European Arnold Schwarzenegger Classic, where I got six in the top six of some of the best people in the world. There were 600 wow. competitors, so I was quite proud to do that. Well done. Yeah, first big international show, so I was really happy. So how did that feel? It felt, on the stage. it felt fantastic because when you compete in your own country, it's great, but when you go abroad and compete internationally with guys that you've looked up to mm. and you've stood on stage with them, it's kind of surreal so, to so, beat them so, as well. So you said look up to, so who in particular have you looked up to? Um, well, I mean, over the years, you, you, the likes of your Dorian Yates, your Lee Haney's, you know, your Flex Wheelers, those were my physiques I was brought up on. And then on the international circuit, the amateur circuit, there's a lot of great guys from Eastern Europe and Spain, and you know, you see them in the magazines or you go to shows and you watch them and you think, hey, up and stood next to them now. So who's really inspired you? Um, in bodybuilding, uh, it's, it's got to be obviously Kerry Kays, because he's always been, even before I was a CMP athlete, my first training partner with IFBB Pro, Colin Wright, uh, friends and family obviously have always been behind me, but my bodybuilding career really was Colin Wright, definitely Colin Wright, definitely Kerry Kays, and a guy who's, a, who's been a local sponsor, who's got a local shop in Bradford called Tony Griffiths, those are the real guys behind me, and they're still behind me now. And it's good to have a good team, isn't it? It's fantastic, yeah, yeah because I get realism with them. Some people might say I'm great when I'm not, but they'll always tell me I'm not if I'm not. Sure. End of story. So, so you know where you stand. So you know where you stand. Absolutely. You know? and that's, yeah. that's important. Yeah, I don't want nobody massaging my ego because I'm very honest with myself. No. I'd rather you tell me you're not on today, you're not going to win today, but you're going to hold your own than say, oh, you was robbed. Yeah. That don't wash with me. But that would rub you the wrong tree. It like. will, of course it was. Yeah. Yeah, there's no worse thinking you're better than you are when you're not, or vice versa. You know? So what's your diet like generally, off season and then on season? Well, because I still like to be athletic, I still, I'm, Kerry always tells me I eat too clean. Right. I'm one of these bodybuilders that can diet all year round. Right. So the only thing that changes in my, what we call an off season is I might have more sodium like sauces on my food and stuff. But my basic daily intake of food would be in the morning I'd wake up, I'd probably have 10 egg whites with a couple of yolks scrambled. Uh, and then I'd probably have a, bo a bowl of porridge and water with a banana. Now my next meal would basically be rotated with chicken, fish or turkey, sweet potato and broccoli, like that for another five times. Wow. And do you ever have a cheat day? Or is it just strictly clean? I, yeah, the thing about having a cheat day, I, I don't believe in a cheat day, I believe right. in a cheat meal. Okay. And the reason I'll tell you this, I'm glad you've asked me that question, sure. is if you have a, a cheat day and you have six meals a day, that's six cheat meals. Mm. If you do that over a calendar month, that's 24. Sure. So it's a lot. So what I tend to do is have a couple of cheat meals. Right. Do you know what I mean? I swap my two meals of clean food mm. and have what I want, but I still stay away from processed oh, food. What, what, what are and my cheat meals would be something like, because I love steak, so okay. it might be a piece of steak with some oven chips and it might be some salmon, okay. which I can have when I'm dieting anyway. Sure. Do you know what I mean? But I like eating foods like that. Mm. And then it's actually part of a diet as well. And I tend to have that on a Sunday night my last two meals. So when I wake up in the morning to do my next training and I'm, them little fats give me a little bit more energy, it actually feels like it's part of my prep and so not actually, so much the cheat. So it's actually helping So you. it's actually helping me, so you Both know what I mean? mentally and more, physically. More yeah, mentally, it takes the edge off and then it's part of my diet. Whereas before, when I used to have cheat days, 
I never got it right on stage. And then Kerry explained to me, he says, well, you've had six cheat meals on a weekend. Mm. That's that's 24 over a calendar month. Do that over a calendar year. How do you expect to get in shape? Absolutely. And you know, I never looked at it like that. So ever since then, I, I eat well all year round. And because I want to look the part all year round, and now I'm representing one of the, for me, the best brand in the country, I uh, go all over seminars in prisons, schools, universities. You know what I mean? You've got to practice what you preach. Absolutely. And, and that's why I love to do that. And um, are there any particular tips you can give uh, people who are looking to gain some bodybuilding, especially when it comes to diet? Yeah, I am. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions out there, but there's also is, a lot of... Uh, it's, it's very difficult to, yeah, to yeah. keep that... Um, that like consistency with your diet. You hit the nail on the head, that's yeah. the best word. I feel bodybuilding is like the film Groundhog Day, nothing changes. Sure. The best bodybuilders in the world are not the best genetically gifted. Dorian Yates wasn't the best genetically gifted. Well, he's going to go down in one of the greatest bodybuilders in history because he did everything he was supposed to do. Mm. Not missed a meal, not missed a workout, didn't miss rest. And, and the key word to all that is what you just said, consistent. being consistent. When we teach everybody, the first thing, I, if you cannot be consistent, irrelevant of your genetics, you will not be last man standing. When I won in 2009, I was the master, and I actually did the open class and the heavyweights. I wasn't the most genetically gifted guy on stage. You know, there was guys, personally, I can admit, that had better physiques than me, but nobody worked harder. You know what I mean? And nobody was more consistent, and I truly believe that's why I won. So, so how do you drill the discipline into yourself? What, what, what motivates you to keep that discipline? It, for me, I mean, you know yourself in any walk of life, you know, you can teach people, you know what I mean? You can lead a, walk, a walk, horse to walk, but you can't make it drink. Absolutely. If someone is not disciplined, you can't really teach them discipline. They've got to have it in them. But what you can do is educate them in a way where you can turn around and say, if you did this, you would improve. And you so would what, gain this. So what I tend to do is, people I don't think is disciplined, I'll say, Try this for two weeks. Never set a big target. Try this for two weeks. And normally after two weeks, do that for two weeks. They will see a change. And then once they see that change, their brain goes, hey, wait a second. What if I do it for four? What if I do it for six? So, so would you say your top tip for keen bodybuilders out there is consistency? Oh, yeah, it's consistency. You've got to understand, Dorian Yates, Lee Haney, some of the greatest Olympians of all time, were nobodies. You know what I mean? In, in our sport, you know what I mean? Nobody's. What made them superstars was always prepared to work. I'm, I won't say fed up, fed up's the wrong word, but I'm sometimes disappointed in people that come up to me and say, I can never look like you. Because I was once a fan walking around in an expo like this, wanting to look like these people. I became a champion because I decided to do something about it. You know what I mean? And I'm no, if you wanted to become a British champion, you could. I'm no better than you. You know, what I have is a great work ethic. If you have that, why can't you become a champion I'm, like I'm, me? I'm all into martial arts. Yeah, but I'm just saying, this is what I tell everybody. You know yeah. what I mean? Don't think we're better than you. Yeah, we no, may be the superstars of the sport, but we're still human beings with two arms and two legs. If you apply yourself, and if it's, you do something you want, you know, like you've got a beautiful house at home, you've got a nice car, you have to work hard for that. Absolutely. Apply the same with your if a sport. It's quite, it's, it's quite unfortunate that a lot of people actually invest more into their cars. Yeah, and, that, that's why I use that their, point. Into their fancy toys than yeah. they do actually their own bodies. Well, this is why I use yeah. that point, you see. But if they did, they, but they must have to work hard for them sure. fancy car and them but toys. I, I do know some guys who spend as much money on, on like mortgage money uh, yeah. on food. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, so, so how much do you spend a month on food? Uh, I mean, I'm fortunate. Obviously, because I'm sponsored by CMP, so that kind of cuts down the sure. cost. But my food bill for an average week for my food could be in excess of £100, you know what I mean? Easily. Absolutely. So, obviously, over the calendar M Mainly month, on meat? So. Yeah, it's mainly me. Yeah. It's mainly me. But I mean, because I've been doing it for a while, I've got great butchers now who, who support me because I've been. So, I really get a good deal and it's not as expensive as it used to be. Sure. And you know, you can go out there and buy processed food, mm. which is a lot more expensive than it is to buy whole whole um, foods. But again, there's a lot of misconception there as well. Yeah. But most people think, right, convenience food, cheap. Yeah, yeah. It's always advertised as cheap food. It's not though, is it? When you it's do, not. You, you no. do the mass. Absolutely. You do the mass over the calendar week and you do a shop well, full of all these processed food and eat numbers and you're spending hundreds of pounds. Hundreds of pounds. I, you know, you can eat for yourself and eat clean. You can get a piece of chicken breast nowadays for a quid and a half. So, Pat, what, what are your best tips for being lean? To, to lose this fat weight? Um, I think you have to combine the two. As a martial artist, you know yourself. I mean, look at the USC now. You've got some of these guys that look like bodybuilders, in great shape, muscular and athletic. Combining the two, obviously, the weight training principles, you know what I mean, the aerobic principles and the right diet. I've learned, I've got one of my coaches now who's a former Muay Thai champion. 
and I feel now that I'm getting in better condition by incorporating some of the stuff he does mm -hmm. with mine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's why you have flexibility, the flexibility and the movement and stuff like that. I feel fitter now than I've ever been in my life, ever fitter. You know, healthier as well. You know what I mean? Because I'm more mobile, and I put that down to my martial arts instructor. So, what's the future of Pat in this industry? For me, the, f the future for this industry, I would like the sport to go in a direction where we treat as athletes. Okay. And I'm glad you touched upon that subject because you look behind any sport now, but it's golf, whether it's it's, it's cricket, whereas all these and football now, even footballs are more muscular. Most of the guys behind them are strength conditioners, which are ex bodybuilders and ex-champions and stuff like that. So we are not recognised as, as, as real athletes, but yet some of the top sportsmen in the world use take those... Take our principles. Yeah, take our principles. You know, which sportsman do you know now that's world class that doesn't train in the gym? Not many. Yeah, not many. Unless they're in darts. Yeah, unless you're doing darts. <laughs> Sorry, darts. But I mean, guys. but even, I mean, we took three or four stone of Phil Taylor. Kevin's done diets for Phil Taylor. So even he understands, him, you know, mm. that he has to be healthier and fitter if he's playing under them lights and playing for six or seven hours. Mm. Do you know graft. what I mean? So it's hard graft. Do you know what I mean? And that's Thank you very much for this interview. Oh, it's my pleasure. Really appreciate my it. My pleasure. Thank you. Keep training, stay healthy. Absolutely. Have you got a website, Facebook page? Um, Yeah, God, you can get me on. Um, Eltoro.googlemail.com. Excellent. Well, thank, thank you very much, Mark. Take care. Take care. Thanks, Matt.